and welcome to this edition of From the Newsroom. My name is Lisa Pallavi Barbara. I don't know how many of you have noticed, but there is a barrage of fixed maturity plans that uh, investors now have access to. Many have been launched in the last couple of months. I've got with me our mutual funds editor, Kaizad Adajania, who's going to talk to us about uh, what FMPs are and why so many have been launched in the last uh, couple of months. Hi, Kaizad. So uh, tell us, you know, why is there sudden interest in FMPs and, uh, you know, AMCs are launching so many? 55 in July, is that right? Yeah, about 55 in July, they collected about 9,000 crore, 10,000 crore worth of inflows. Now, this was about only 3,000 crore inflows in the month of June and only 1,000 crore of inflows in the month of May. So you can see how much the inflows in FMPs have gone up. Now, the main reason behind this was that when RBI tightened liquidity in the month of July, uh, the short-term rates and the long-term rates, in fact, they shot up to about 10%. It, even some CPs were giving 11%. Okay, so uh, obviously, FMPs investing in the easy yields would earn as much give or take a few basis points for expenses so obviously high returns uh, and uh, lack of other opportunities uh, made fund houses sort of uh, you know aggressively sell these FMPs to distributors okay thanks now uh, your story also talks about uh, very high uh, distributor fees in these products now what does that mean does it eat into investor returns uh, good bad what is it, what does it mean to have such high fees well, some uh, FMPs uh, are in fact giving um, uh, slightly higher commission to distributors. Most of the, see, FMP as a product is a, is, is a low expense product. So in a low expense product, um, the distributor's income or the distributor expense from the fund house's point of view is supposed to be minimal. But it's sometimes uh, some of these fund houses have been giving high uh, commissions to FMPs and also uh, what they do is that because it's a closed end product, they upfront all the commission they paid in the first year itself. So which is why the commissions in the first year actually look quite high and in some cases yes they are uh, higher than uh, normal. Okay, so Kaizad, we know that uh, different financial products are meant for different types of investors. So who is the ideal FMP investor or, you know, to put it another way, are there some things that one needs to look out for before investing in an FMP? Yeah, basically, so, uh, you know, in an FMP is a kind of a product, you know, it's a closed-end product. So if you feel that you don't require the money for, let's say, the next one year or three years or even five years, if the tenure of the FMP is that, then you invest in that product. If you think that you want the money uh, beforehand, uh, if you think that you need the money in the interim, then please don't invest in FMP because there is no liquidity. You can, of course, take the FMP to the stock markets and try and sell it over there, but there is no liquidity on the stock markets. There are no buyers, so you won't be able to sell your product. So uh, invest in FMP if you feel that you won't need the money for the next one or two or three years. Also, if you're in the 10% tax bracket, do not invest in an FMP, you invest in a bank FD. But it's only if you're in a higher tax bracket, like, like say 20% or 30%, then you can invest in an FMP. So those kind of, um, just keep those things uh, in mind before investing in an FMP. Thanks for that, Kaizad. So there you have it. Many fund houses are launching a lot of FMPs. If it falls within your goal chart, uh, you can get that little bit of a return kicker that FMPs are giving now if you don't need uh, the money. So if you're okay with the lock-in, go ahead and buy one. That's for all from us from this show. Thank you for joining us.